Hello, this is uh, week three of our series, Christianity 101. I'm uh, doing these videos to help you. Maybe you lead a community group, or maybe you just gathered a group to, uh, to do this series. So I've got a couple questions for you and a few comments that will hopefully help you along your way. So we're turning to Romans chapter 2 today. The Apostle Paul writes in verse 1, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Paul says when you judge other people, you're probably guilty yourself because you probably do the same thing. Uh, Saturday, my daughter Jamie and I were driving to Costco, and uh, a car two, two ahead of us stopped suddenly in the middle of the road, and the car in front of us ran into it, then we ran into it, and then another car hit us from behind. So we had a four-car pileup. Well, I called the police, and uh, they came out, and, uh, and in about a couple minutes, I got out of the car, and the car that had run into us from behind had left. So I thought, what a scoundrel. I mean, it's wrong to hit somebody and, and not pay for it and to just take off. Um, so I judged that person. But then I have to think about it. You know, how many times have I uh, done something wrong and I want to cover it up? I don't want anybody to know about it. So I really do the same thing. I try to hide things I do wrong. Uh, so Paul is saying that uh, the fact that we judge other people is sort of an uh, uh, admission, uh, indirect at least, that we know right from wrong. We just kind of intuitively know that when you get in a car accident, you're supposed to stop and share your insur insurance information. We all know that. So we all know right and wrong, and if there really is right and wrong, well that kind of suggests there must be a God behind that right and wrong. So I want you to turn to somebody in your group and just talk about that. Do you uh, agree that the fact that we judge other people suggests that we know right from wrong, which might suggest that there is a God? Do you agree or disagree? All right, in Romans chapter 1, uh, the Apostle Paul writes in verse 19, Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. So Paul's saying is everybody can just kind of look around at the world and how beautiful it is and how carefully the earth is designed and probably know that there's a God. Uh, when we reject God, he says things get progressively worse. Verse 23, and they exchange the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. So when we reject God, he says we don't stop worshiping, we just worship something else. And we've seen this in many cultures. People start out worshiping, uh, you know, statues of humans. Then it's animals, birds. And eventually it's reptiles. Uh, things get uh, worse. But then Paul goes on and just talks about the bad things that happen in this world once we've rejected God. And then chapter 1, verse 32, he kind of fin uh, finishes it off. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Uh, he says the bottom rung of the ladder is we not only do things that are wrong, but we celebrate it and we applaud other people that are doing wrong. All right, then in chapter 2, the Apostle Paul turns uh, to people who think they're good enough that they can judge other people and that they can probably get into heaven on their own by what they do. Uh, so he says in verse 3, So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment on them, and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Uh, when you judge other people, and we all do, there's this human tendency for us to judge other people, we're really admitting that there is some sort of standard of right and wrong. 
That's the basis for us to judge other people. Um, so God says we all can know right from wrong, and so God uh, is impartial in his judgment. He's fair in his judgment. Uh, then verse 11, Romans chapter 2, he says, For God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law, in other words, they don't, they don't know the Bible, they've never heard it, will also perish apart from the law. And all who sin under the law, in other words, they have the Bible, they know God's truth, will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles do not have the law, do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. So Paul is saying that God has created this world, we can see that, and God has also written on our hearts, in our minds, the laws of right and wrong that he's set down uh, in this world. Well, if that's the case, this would explain the worldwide agreement that certain things are wrong. All different cultures around the world agree that murder is wrong. Every culture agrees that love is better than selfishness. There are differences from culture to culture, but there's far more agreement on things that are right and things that are wrong. You know, like there ought to be human rights. There ought to be justice. Uh, Paul suggests this is a good case that there is a God behind right and wrong. So again, I'd like you to turn to your neighbor. Do you agree that the fact that we judge others and is an admission that there's right and wrong and that suggests that there really is God? Once you've done that, go ahead with your study. If you're using the journal, go through that and, and pray for each other. Hope you have a great, great time. Thanks.